communities. Are there people that live next door to you? Are the homes spread out and far away from each other? Or very close together and maybe even stacked on top of one another? Do you have a yard or a balcony? Do you have a lot of space around your home? Or do you share a common area with neighbors? We all have a neighbor. Some of those neighbors may live far away or very close. Regardless of the distance between us, all people live in a community. A community is a name for a place where different groups of people live. The members of a small or large community like a town, state, or country are called citizens. Citizens that live in the same community usually follow the same rules. These rules may be different depending on where you live. There may be rules in your community, like you cannot have loud music late at night, to respect people who are trying to sleep. Another rule may be that you cannot have cars parked on the street during winter time, so the snow plow can plow the roads. Some communities let you raise animals in your backyard while some do not. Rules exist in all communities. They are there to help people get along with each other. Most community rules are called laws. An example of a law is stopping at a red light and going when it turns green. Without rules, things would get confusing. Can you imagine what would happen if you did not stop at a red light? Or if you didn't go when the light turned green? It could result in accidents and people getting hurt. Rules or laws help us protect and respect each other. It is important to follow them. When you do, you are being a good citizen or member of your community. But being a good citizen isn't just about following the laws. Helping others may not be a law, but it is what a good citizen does. By being a good citizen, you show you are a responsible member of the community. It also shows that you care about the neighbors living in your community. In return, they will care about you too. Can you think of some responsibilities that you have at home? Maybe you have some jobs that you need to do each day, like cleaning your room or making your bed. Each person in your home may have different responsibilities, like going to work, cleaning, or making dinner. But everyone does something to contribute to your family unit. You do this so that the house gets clean, people get fed, and things are paid for. It's the same in your community. Each family unit takes responsibility for your community. Can you think of some things that you might do outside of your home for your community? Do you pick up garbage if you see it on the street or in a lobby? Do you make sure your garbage gets into the proper receptacle and is not littered? Are you careful that you aren't too loud or run around and bang on the floor if you have neighbors living below you or next to you? If you see a lost animal, do you help locate its owner? Or maybe you take a meal to someone in need? Or help with work around the yard or a farm? Those are all ways that help us be good citizens, and not just where we live either, but in communities we might visit as well. We may choose to do activities together as a community. Parades, a community fundraiser, and a neighborhood barbecue or picnic are a few examples of various community activities. In most parts of the world, there are three types of communities. They are called urban, suburban, and rural. Each of these communities is different, but each of them has citizens with neighbors, laws, and responsibilities. Cities are urban communities. A large city has many people in it. It might have tall buildings called skyscrapers or high-rises. The buildings are used as offices as well as apartments or homes for its citizens. In the city, people live close together. There aren't many backyards because there isn't the room for them. In addition to high-rise apartment buildings, there may also be townhouses. A townhouse is a tall, narrow home 
that is connected on one or both sides to other townhomes. Taxi cabs and buses are also found in the city. Many people use those for transportation instead of having their own car. In the city, there may be a large park where people can go to walk, play games, or enjoy a picnic. Because there aren't many backyards in urban communities, many cities have swimming pools or recreation centers where people can go for exercise and fun. In the city, many things are close by. You probably won't have to go very far to get to a store, a restaurant, or a movie theater. You might even be able to walk to them. Because there are a lot of people living in the city, there is often a lot of traffic and noise. New York City is a famous big city in the United States where many people live and work. A suburban community, or suburban, means it is a medium-sized community near a large city. In a suburban community or neighborhood, there are a lot of different sized homes. Many people drive into this city or take the bus to get to work. Many of the houses have lawns or back and front yards. Some of the homes will have a garage. Often, there are fewer people in a suburban community than a large city or urban community. Suburban communities have many small parks fields, and shopping malls. These communities might have fewer buildings and inhabitants than an urban community, but more than a rural community. In a rural community, there is a lot of open land. There are farms, forests, and fewer homes. In rural communities, there is more land than there are houses or people. It is the opposite of an urban community. There are far more buildings and people than there is open land. In a rural community, the houses are far apart, sometimes even miles apart. Most farms are in rural areas. There are community parks and fields. Living in a rural community, life may be a lot slower paced and quieter than in a city. Unlike the city, in a rural community, People sometimes must drive far to get to places. Now that you know the difference between an urban, suburban, and rural community, do you know what type of community you live in? Citizens living in all three of these communities come from different cultures and backgrounds. Because of that, they have different special customs, traditions, and celebrations that make each citizen unique. Their differences create diversity in a community. Diversity gives us different types of food, religion, entertainment, and customs. Respecting the uniqueness of each person in a community also makes us good citizens and helps us live in harmony with each other. All of these communities have schools and places where children can learn and play with each other. In an urban community, there may be many schools, with a lot of children that attend each school. Children may be able to walk a short distance or take a subway ride to school. In a suburban community, some of the children may be able to walk to school, while other children who live a few miles from the school may get a ride or take a bus. In a rural community, students may need to take a long bus ride to get to and from school each day. There are far fewer schools in a rural community because there are fewer people in these communities. In fact, there may only be one or two schools in a rural community that all the kids attend together. Even though there are several differences in each type of community, the adults and children living in each place love to work, play, laugh, and have fun with their families and neighbors. Remember each type of community, urban, suburban, and rural may be a little different, but they all have citizens, neighbors, laws, and responsibilities. Everyone in a community need to try to get along with each other and respect each other's differences for the community to function well. And when they do, a community is a great thing to be a part of. 
Thanks for following Clarendon Learning. Be sure to subscribe. For more free resources, check us out at clarendonlearning.org.